Hi, my name is Skyler. In a minute, I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Linux on a Mac using Parallels. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is open Parallels. If you've already got an operating system installed, it's going to show right here in this window. If you've got more than one, it'll ask you which one you want to use. Just pick one for now. And then what we're going to do is go up to the top. We're going to click File and then New. And we're going to select Custom. And click Next. That's going to ask us what operating system type we want. We're going to pick Solaris and Solaris 10. It may seem kind of weird, but there's a bug in the current version of Parallels where you have to install with that. So go ahead and click Next. That's going to ask you how much RAM you want to use. I'm just going to do 256. The max that they recommend is 604. It kind of just depends on how much RAM you have. So you kind of want to just test it out and see what works best for you. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and go down here and click Next. And now it's going to ask you to create a partition. What we're going to do is click Create a New Hard Disk Image, and then Next. And now we're going to give it the amount of space that we want to use for it. I'm just going to do 4 gigs. Um, you've got another option here, Expanding or Plain. Expanding is nice because it only uses as much space as it needs. It'll start out small and then expand to whatever amount you have there. Plain goes ahead and just uses up all of the space right away. So there's not really any way to, to kind of shrink it if you don't need that space. So we're going to go ahead and select Expanding and then click Next. Now it's going to ask us what kind of networking we're going to use. We want to select Shared Networking. That does is it's going to use whatever you've got set up on your Mac by default. So like in this case, I'm using my airport, so it'll use that. And we're going to go ahead and click Next. And it's going to ask you for a name. Let's go ahead and type that in there. And click Next. Now it's going to ask you for the CD. Uh, if you've got a physical CD, go ahead and insert it, but we're going to use ISO image. So go ahead and select that and then find it. Click Next. Uncheck Start and click Finish. Now we've got our virtual machine right here. Now we're going to change a few things here real quick before we start it up. So we're going to go ahead and click on Configuration. And we are going to go down here and click on Add. We need to add our sound, so we're going to click that and then Next. Just leave it as Default Audio. Activate Sound on Startup. And then go ahead and click Finish. Now you'll notice there are a couple other options here. If for whatever reason some of your settings aren't working, you can come back in here and check this stuff out. Things like your memory, your uh, your video resolutions that you have set up, your shared folders, um, your, your disk image that you created, all that kind of stuff. If you don't see anything, you can click Add, and there's a few other options in here. USB, all that kind of stuff. Um, we don't really need any of this stuff for right now, so we're just going to click Cancel. And then... Um, Go ahead and click OK when you get done here. And now we're going to go ahead and start it up. Just click that green play button. And click start. And here it goes. Now go ahead and just push enter. And it's going to go ahead and start booting. What it's doing is Linux, Linux is actually booting from a live CD, so you're not actually in the actual Linux operating system. You're just booting from a disk, in this case our ISO image. And in a little bit here it should start up. Uh, it's giving us an error. I'll just go ahead and click close. And if you see two cursors here, it's a it's a bug in the way that the screen capture took. We're going to be using the white mouse here, not the black one. So go ahead and click install. Double click. And here it pops up with the install window. Now the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to um, ask us what language we want to use. So go ahead and select your language, in this case English. And then we are going to go ahead and go over here and click forward. Now it's asking you what your time zone is. So you want to select that. 
In our case, our time zone is already selected, New York. And as you see, there's all kinds of options there. Go ahead and click forward. Now it's asking for your keyboard layout. So we're gonna do US English. If you wanted to change any of these, this is where you'd do that. And then click forward. Now it's getting ready to uh, partition your virtual disk that you set up earlier when you installed. And that shouldn't take more than a few seconds. Now it's asking you what you want to choose here. Just leave what's already checked, guided. And then go ahead and click forward. And it kind of partitions there for a few seconds. Now it's asking if you want to migrate any user profiles or anything. If you've got an existing Linux account that you'd like to use with this, you, you could do that here. Since I don't already have it installed, I'm just going to ignore this for now. We're going to go ahead and go down and click on forward. Now it's asking you about your login information. So you type in your name there, name that you want to use to log in, and your password. Go ahead and type it in again. Now it's asking you what you want to call the computer. So I'm just going to rename that. This could be whatever you want. It just identifies what the, the computer is on the network. You can go ahead and click forward. And now it just confirms all the settings that you've entered. If you need to change anything, you can go back and change that. Just take a look over it and then click install. Now this will take a little bit, so I'll check back later. Okay, so we finished installing. Um, now you see it pops up a little message telling you that it's finished. It's going to ask you if you want to continue using the live CD or restart. In order for you to actually start using the operating system, you need to restart. But we're going to actually click continue because we've got to shut it down. So go ahead and go up to the top right corner and click on that red power button and then click shut down. Parallels needs to actually shut down. You can't restart. Okay, so there we see it again. Now we need to change a few things before we can get it to work in. So we're going to go ahead and click on configuration. And then we're going to go over here and select Linux and change it to other Linux kernel 2.6. Like what I was saying earlier, it needed to be Solaris to install, but you want to make sure you switch that back after it's already installed. Now, I noticed it was taking a little bit for things to happen for me, so I'm going to go ahead and bump my RAM up a little bit and click OK. Now you see it's set as a Linux machine. Go ahead and click Start. We'll see if it worked. And it looks like it's booting up. There you go. Hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me.